I've been using OpenSUSE for about a year now. Um, not on the desktop, the desktop I'm running Arch, uh, technically Manjaro. Um, but I've been using it as a server for, again, about a year. It's uh, been my network attached storage server. Um, it's where I have been doing all of my raid, um, attaching file systems, adding an SMB share, uh, doing system backups, and it has been hell. So I think the most important thing when looking at the website here is that it says the maker's choice for sysadmins, developers, and desktop users. And that is exactly the experience I've had. So OpenSUSE uses the same package manager as RHEL-based distributions, you know, your Fedora, uh, Red Hat, um, CentOS, which is, you know, a whole nightmare, um, Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. Uh, it uses the same RPMs, but it does not have the packages. Um, I've run into it time and time again. I found a solution for some kind of problem I'm trying to solve, and it's not available on OpenSUSE. So if you're trying to learn a lot more about Linux, OpenSUSE is actually a great option. In a lot of ways, it's very similar to Gentoo, not through the installation or anything like that, but because you're going to have to build and maintain a lot of packages yourself. Um, and that's not something I was super prepared for. Um, and again, I learned a ton. But... Um, for network attached storage, I'm eventually going to switch to TrueNAS scale. I'm just waiting for some parts to come in for an upgrade, but um, OpenSUSE just didn't cut it for me. And I kind of want to show you the problems with SUSE and why, why I think this. Um, so if you go into using SUSE or if you're thinking about using SUSE, you can get a better understanding. So first off, you have two different distributions. And if you're running this as a server, you're going to be using Leap. Um, Leap is... Um, a lot more similar to like Fedora, where you get kind of snapshot releases. You're not going to have, you know, like the Arch based thing where you have rolling releases on your packages, um, and it's much more better for stability. So I'm running uh, Leap 15.3 right now, um, which I upgraded from 15.2. It was a super easy upgrade. Um, Got to give them credit where credit is due. The tools that SUSE has are really great. The problem, again, is the packages. So uh, one thing I've been up to lately is OpenStack. It's a uh, private cloud tool. Um, so I just kind of pulled up some search terms here. So if we look here, OpenSUSE, OpenStack, you're going to see Google returns about 230,000 results. That's a lot of results. Um, there's definitely a lot of guides, a lot of tutorials, and a lot of help with this application. It's a pretty large enterprise application. A lot of people are using it. So there is a lot of results um, and a lot of use cases here. I'm actually in the way, aren't I? Put myself over there. Um, but you can see 230,000 results. Um, if we look at CentOS, which again is not, it's not Ubuntu, it's not Debian, and it's not Red Hat, which I think are much more popular distributions. 3.8 uh, million results. We're talking more than 10 times the results for people trying to install OpenStack using Red Hat or a CentOS you know, based distribution. And I think that is just really important um, again, I've tried to use SyncThing, Your Backup, and a lot of these different tools. Um, a lot of R Sync applications. Again, this is a NAS. Um, and I was building packages by hand. You know, I was cloning Git repos. Um, I was pulling in really weird, um, like PPA similarity kind of things, like Ubuntu uses. Um, and it, it was a really bad administrative experience. And again, to kind of further drive this point home, uh, if we go right here, got some Google Trends results. Uh, so we're looking at OpenSUSE versus Debian. Debian, again, it's not a super popular uh, distribution for people to be using. Um, and if we look, it puts it to shame. Uh, it's putting OpenSUSE way at the bottom. There is no state uh, in the United States for these trends that prefer OpenSUSE to Debian. We change OpenSUSE to SUSE as well. You're going to see about the same results. Um, okay, we do have one state, actually, North Dakota, 50-50. Um, but then if we go in here and we add another comparison, let's say we threw Ubuntu in here. Not a chance. Um, the popularity difference is crazy. So you're looking at 6% being the best case scenario for SUSE versus Debian and Ubuntu. And with that, again, so you're going to not only lose out on package maintenance, um, but you're also going to lose out on tutorials. If you are new to Linux and you're trying to use SUSE, it's going to be a bad experience. Um, and this, again, is for the server. 
Um, I've used OpenSUSE Desktop before. It is honestly a pretty decent experience if you know what you're getting into. Um, compare it much more similar again to Gen 2 or your BSDs, just in terms of what you have actually available to you. It has to be a pretty portable application that got ported to SUSE. So there had to be enough development interest to port to SUSE. So you're still going to have all your flat packs and your snaps. Um, if that's something you prefer to do, if it has an app image, you're going to be good there. But these are more client facing tools where on the server, you're not going to see as many snaps and you're not going to see as many uh, flat packs or app images. So again, not only do you lose out on just the community support, but um, with community support comes more forum posts, more topics, more guides, more tutorials. And that doesn't exist in the OpenSUSE or SUSE ecosystem. So you're running into just developer hell, system administrator hell, because you're trying to integrate a new service to your server and the connectors aren't there. So you have to have a fair amount of knowledge of how to you know, make a package from source. And then if there's an update or there's some kind of major vulnerability, you have to upgrade that. Um, and again, SUSE is such an interesting community. It has a really, really cool set of tools. It uses YAST. Um, and my server's offline right now, but if I pull up YAS2, kind of show you this. It's a beautiful um, text interface for managing your uh, firewall, your packages, your networking, your system administration. Like, YAS is a very cool tool, and it's something you really only see in SUSE. And there's a lot of just very unique to SUSE packages that are built into the operating system. But if you're trying to install anything that's remotely obscure or just not a super common use case, you're not going to be able to find that service. You're going to find all of your MySQLs. It's going to have an SSH daemon. It's going to have an uh, Avahi daemon. It's going to have um, web servers, uh, Python, all those basic tools. But the second you try to do anything that's a bit more complicated or a bit less common than those tools, you're really going to struggle. So. If you're really interested in the OpenSUSE ecosystem, give it a shot, give it a chance. Um, again, they, they do a really good job with what they have, but the community is just a little too small in my opinion. Um, if you are looking for alternatives, I would really look at Rocky Linux, I would look at Alma Linux. Um, those are gonna be downstreams, or I think downstreams, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, of Red Hat. Um, so you're still getting all the benefits of CentOS with CentOS being sunset into more of a rolling release. Um, and you know they're both using RPMs. You can build packages the same way by hand if you want to, or you can install them using you know Apple uh, extra packages for enterprise Linux. Um, if you wanna go with something even more standard, Ubuntu server, Debian server, those are gonna be my recommendations. I run primarily Debian. Um, currently on my stack, I have one running Alma Linux, I have one server running NixOS, um, I'm running Arch on this system, and then my Raspberry Pis run Ubuntu. I think that's everything. Um, and I've just never had more issues um, managing a server. So um, if you are interested in SUSE, give it a shot, give it a try, especially on the, uh, the desktop. I think it is a really neat operating system. But unless you have a specific use case for SUSE, I really would recommend researching your options and trying to find something else. Um, again, with my SUSE instance, I'm actually gonna be converting it to TrueNAS Scale, which is a Linux-based version of TrueNAS um, that has Docker built into it and a lot of great tools like that. And it's just gonna give me a, but a much clearer path to the services I need. So I enjoyed running it on bare metal from a terminal, but OpenSUSE uh, versus TrueNAS, they're two very different applications. So I'm going to get all of the developer community of TrueNAS, I'm gonna get the ease of use, which when you're working with something as important as your network storage, you want it to be easy to use, you want it to be easy to manage and operate. Um, and that's what I identified as my best use case. So um, again, just if you're thinking OpenSUSE, I would look elsewhere. I'm not gonna discourage you from using it, but I want you to weigh the options and weigh the alternatives and just make sure you know what you're signing up for because it is a lot harder to administer services using OpenSUSE.